welcome back guys uh, first let me apologize for the previous video got a little long this video gets a little long I promise I'll break it up so let's get started and what we're going to talk about in this one is the GM bypass ignition system and um, this applies to for Ford and also Chrysler use this system just prop you know they use different terminology but the system pretty much you know works about the same okay so what we're going to do is, I guess the first thing I need to say is, what, what does the bypass mean? Well, on startup, when the engine is first starting up, the computer is out of, out of the circuit. You can think of it's not even being there, all right? So uh, the ICM is controlling the spark, okay? It's controlling the spark of this here engine as far as when to fire, and it knows when to fire it. When, you know, the individual coil packs. We have three of them. So how does the ICM know when to fire the coil packs and which one? Okay, so let's start over here. We'll take a look at these here crank signals. As you know, we got two of them, okay? I guess probably right there is a good place to start. Now, we're not going to talk about the crankshaft position sensor because we've already covered that in uh, two previous videos. But let's take a look at these here two signals that's generated out of the crank sensor. We got one down here. This is the 18X, and as you know, it's 18 off ohm pulses per crank. You can see the voltages on both of these signals, the 3X sync cr uh, crank signal up there at the top. Both of them is from 0 to 6.5 volt DC peak. Okay? Now, these uh, two signals are used to determine when to fire the coal and also which, which coal to fire. All right, let's see how it actually does that. So if I take this 18x signal, and I'm just going to kind of push them right up in there, and let's go up here and zoom in on that a little bit, okay? And let's see what we got here. Take a look at this red signal here. Now you see we have three pulses. They get a little bit wider as we go along. Now that's three pulses per crank rotation, where the other one in blue is 18 pulses per crank rotation, all right? Now, as I mentioned, from one, uh, if we're looking at the 3x, which is in red, from one pulse to the next, it's 120 degrees of the crank. If we look at the blue, we have 18. We take 360 divided by 18, and we're going to have 20 degrees of crank rotation. So, so by knowing that, the ICM kind of can figure out what the rotation of the, uh, you know, where the crank is at. But now let's determine how does it know where or when to fire those coils. Okay, or which coil pack to fire, I should say. If we take a look at this here red pulse, the very the, sm the smallest width one here, we can see that there's one transition inside that pulse width. Okay, what is a transition? A transition is either a rising or a falling edge. That would be, you know, where it's going from uh, zero volts going up high to six and a half or the falling is going from six and a half volts down to zero. So we can see that we have a falling edge right there, so we have one transition. Let's take a look at the second one here. How many transitions do you see? I see two. There's one right there, and there's a second one right there. And let's look at the third one over here. So there's one, there's two, and then there's three. So we have one transition, two transitions, three transitions. So that means this is going to fire one coil, then it's, the crank's going to move, 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 fire the next coil, move, 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 fire the next coil. So that's how it knows when to fire it and which coil pack to fire. Okay, why don't we uh, take a look at Picascope and we can see the exact same thing that I just illustrated. So you, as, there's our 3x signal in red and there's our 18x. So you see there is one transition, okay. There is two transitions inside this red pulse, and again, there is one, two, three over here. All right, so let's take and move this down to here, back to where it was. Okay. All right, let's start off. Let's take a look at this 18x signal when it comes in. All right, when it comes in, and you know what that is, we've already talked about it. So, in the previous video. So, let's go and look where it's going to go now. It's going to go to a filter buffer. Now, a filter circuit, all that does is clean up any kind of uh, little spikes, little hash, anything that might be on the signal. So, it's going to kind of clean this signal up. All right. The buffer, 
Anytime you hear the word buffer, that means it's a circuit that's going to increase the current drive capability so it can drive the input over to the PCM. So basically the signal is going to be pretty much coming out the same way. The only difference that when this signal comes out to be dri driving the PCM is it's just going to drop the volts down. So we just dropped down to 5 volt DC where we were coming in at 6.5 volt DC. Okay. Now this signal that comes out, they call that the 18x reference signal. Now this signal is going to be used for RPM when it's below 1200 and it's also going to tell the PCM where is the crank, crank position at. Okay, now let's go back and let's go up to here. Now we have another circuit up here. This is the divide by 6 counter. Now, this counter is going to take those 18x reference pulses and it's going to divide it by 6. That means if I have 18 pulses coming in, I'm going to have 3 pulses coming out. Alright, but before we go any further, let's keep in mind, let's look at this divide by 6 counter. This counter will not divide anything until it sees this 3x signal up here. Now when, this three, when it sees this 3x signal, it's going to enable up this here divide by 6 counter and therefore we need both of these signals before that is going to happen. If you're missing either this signal, the 3x sync signal, or if you're missing the 18x, sync, uh, 18x crank signal, well this divide by 6 counter is not going to work and it is not this here ICM will not provide a 3x reference signal and it ain't going to provide no 18x reference signal. What does that mean? That means your car is not going to start if you miss either one of these two signals on the crank. Okay. Now the service literature said that if you miss either one of these here crank signals that you're going to miss your fuel injection pulse. But I think what's going to happen is you ain't going to get any spark either the bottom line is your car is not going to crank okay so once it does see that 3x signal which is going to enable this here divide by 6 counter then it's going to start dividing this here 18x pulses into 3x pulses which then becomes the 3x reference pulses now here's the here's the thing once your car cranks up let's say that you lost the 3x sync signal well, at that point, your car is going to continue running because it only starts doing the divide by 6 initially on startup when it's looking at that 3x signal. So, if you happen to lose your 3x sync signal, then what's going to happen is it's, going to, it's not going to look at it anymore and then it's just going to start dividing these here pulses up off the 18x to give us the 3x reference. Okay. Later on, we're going to look at all the different kind of scenarios. If you lost the 3x, what's going to happen? If you lost the 18x while it's running, or if you lost the 3x sync crank signal while it's running, what's going to happen? You know, and same for the 18x crank. So we're going to look into that at the very end of the video. But for right now, let's uh, just continue on. Oh, and by the way, once it actually starts this here sequencing of firing the coils, it stores it in memory. So at that point, it knows which order to fire the coils. Okay, so that's all internally stored in the memory. Now, once you turn the car off, then you pretty much cleared out the memory. Then it's going to start that sequence all over again, where it has to go back and look at these two signals again to determine which coil to fire and when to fire it. But after it gets started, then it's, it's, uh, it's got it in memory then. Okay. So anyway, that 3x signal is going to come out and it's going to become a 3x reference signal. Again, you can see that it pretty much divided the 18 pulses by 6. Now it's going to give us 3 pulses per crank rotation. Now this again is a RPM signal and a crank position signal that the PCM is using. And in this case, it's going to be looking at this signal once your RPM gets above 1200. Now on the 18x reference signal, if I didn't mention it, it's going to start looking at that signal when you get below 1200 RPM. Okay. 
let's see uh, right up here the, these two counters one is the 3x you see the 3x crank signals coming into the counter and then you got the other one here this this and the is the using uh, with this circuit here to determine which coal to fire and when to fire it, which we we talked about that just a while ago. Okay, all right. So we got that covered. And before we move away, why don't we take a look down here at the camshaft position sensor? So we'll talk about him a little bit. Now this here signal right here to send the purple or magenta. This is the cam signal right here. Now this signal down here is I just threw this up for reference okay so we can compare it to this one up here and if you look right there you can see that this here signal and it, and by the way this is a this is a pull down design too right because look we see our voltage is being supplied through a resistor just exactly like the crank sensor okay so so there's nothing different on that one and you can also see we have the power to power up the camshaft sensor the point is you can see that the camshaft position sensor signal is actually being fed into the ICM now this here signal will pull low right as you see right here and this is going to occur on the number one piston at approximately 25 degrees after top dead center on the power stroke okay so that's that signal is used to uh, sequentially fire the injector so when that signal pulls low it knows the computer knows where the piston is at at that point right now and then of course we have all of these other signals that's used over here right we have the uh, 18x and the 3x so using those it can determine where the crank uh, is located and also it can determine what the RPM is. Now this here signal is going to pull low when we're at this position and it does that because there's a magnet on the back on the camshaft sprocket. Now once the magnet gets in front of the Hall effect sensor that's when it pulls low. That's when the transistor turns on just like the crank signal. So then it's going to stay low and then the magnet's going to be left off of the sprocket and then it's going to be high all during this period. Now, you can see now that we have quite a few pulses here. Remember, there's 18x that gives us one that's one uh, crank rotation. Now, on this here cam sensor between this pulse and this pulse, that's going to occur for every revolution of the camshaft. All right? the crank shaft is going to turn two revolutions and that's why we'll have all these more pulses so if we got 18 per uh, crank rotation that means we're going to have 36 pulses between these here okay between these pulses here okay and as you see the, the voltage is exactly the same zero to six and a half volt DC peak just like the uh, crank sensor now what's going to happen here is going to go through a filter buffer, nothing else, and it's just going to get passed through, and then it's going to come out just like it came in, except the only difference is we're going to have a 5-volt DC peak here, okay? And right here I'm just saying that uh, this here low signal is generated per uh, camshaft rotation there, all right? Uh, one other thing too we look at, we got a reference low signal. It's called a reference low. It's uh, basically, it's a... It's the ground that's internally inside the ICM. It provides a ground for the uh, RPM counters that's inside the uh, PCM, and it's also for a return sig uh, for the 3x and the 18x uh, reference signals. Probably ought to say reference in there. Let's just do that right now. Reference and 18x reference return. Okay. How about that? Do stuff right on the fly. Okay, so now let's see what else we want to talk about. Okay, so now the engine gets cranked up. So then what's going to happen is that the computer, the PCM, is going to start to see the 3x reference signal and it's going to see the 18x reference signal. Once it sees those signals, then the computer is going to say, hey, I would like to take control of firing the... Uh, you know firing the timing of these here coils in other words it's going to take care of the spark advance and it's going to determine what the dwell period is for how long these coils are going to be activated 
Now keep in mind that the computer does not know anything about which coil to fire. All of that responsibility is still back in the ICM. So it's determining the coil sequencing, okay? So let's look at it. So it's coming in with these two signals. Now the computer says it wants control. So now it's gonna turn around and it's gonna send out a five volt. It's gonna put five volts on this line right here. So the five volts is gonna come down and what's gonna happen is what, once the ICM sees the five volts, then it's gonna switch over control and says, okay, you can now have control, telling the PCM it can have control. Then these signals are gonna come through and uh, that, in other words, this five volts, once it sees it on this analog switch, then the analog switch is gonna switch over. This is my common. It's gonna switch from here, go to here, right? And then here's the, here's the timing pulses for the ignition control. In other words, these little pulses that's gonna be turning on and off the bases of those three driver transistors, you know, far as uh, telling it how long the coil is gonna be, and it's actually changing this, you know, the spark duration as far as the dwell period on the coils. Again, the computer doesn't know which coil to fire. The ICM is gonna take control of that. Okay, so you notice up here it says zero volts. When the engine is cranking, remember I said the ICM is in control? That's the bypass mode. So at that point, it's a zero volts here. But once the engine gets running, the, IC, uh, the PCM sees the 18X and the 3X reference signals. It's gonna turn around. It's gonna make this line right here, turn it to five volts. Now, while the engine is running, these here pulses could probably be, uh, I mean, while the engine is starting, these pulses will be actually generated, right? It's sitting there just throwing these pulses out. But the ICM is going to ignore them if it sees zero volts up here on this here bypass line. Remember zero volts, the ICM is in control. So what will happen is these pulses will come along and will come along and they're just going to, the ICM is just going to put them to ground. So basically it's just going to ignore them. All right. So once, uh, once the ICM sees this five volts that's supplied by the PCM, then this here analog switch is gonna switch and take it off the of ground, and it's gonna switch over to here. Now these signals are gonna come through, come through, and now they're gonna come through, and now it's in control of firing the coils, okay? As far as, uh, as uh, the dwell period, you know, and when to fire it, okay? but it does not know which coil to fire, okay? So that's pretty much, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, this is just stuff I put in there, you know, it's basically the counter, the PCM has a counter, of course it's counting these pulses here. Like I said, to get the position of the crank, you know, determine, uh, you know, when to look at one of these signals, one or the other. I mean, it's looking at both of them, but it, Based on RPM, it'll switch over to looking at one more than the other, okay? And, and uh, let's see if there's anything else. I think that's gonna, that's pretty much about it. One last thing before we close this video out, guys, uh, before I forget about it. When the ICM is in the bypass mode and it's controlling the uh, ignition timing, that uh, timing is 10 degrees before top dead center, and all of that is programmed inside the ICM. Of course, when the PCM takes over, then it's controlling the, you know, the ignition timing then. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up, and I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and we, we're going to take care of all these other uh, different scenarios in the next video, because this one is getting just a little bit long. So you guys take care, and I appreciate you guys watching.